Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the CHOKABROS. I'm your host, Sam Snake Prime. I'm Zach Bro, And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And today we got a special guest. Let's say happy birthday to Mr. Jesse James. Happy birthday, hey, sir. Woo! Happy Good. birthday, it Jesse. It's also Richie's birthday, so shout out to Richie. Happy birthday, Richie. Um, so Jesse, how old are you today? Eight. Eight years old, man. And oh, the what worst Final Fantasy. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he graduated from the best to the worst. Yeah, um, right. what, what is your favorite Final Fantasy, Jesse? My favorite Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy 15. My man, he knows what's up. <laughs> Good answer. Why New is it age. Because <laughs> when I started playing Noctis, I found out that Noctis was really good. I used to think it was just like a card that people played a lot. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> and, and t- tell me about what are your favorite cards? What's your favorite card? Noctis. Noctis, okay. Oh, it's not, uh, I, guess, I guess I knew it was Noctis. All right, if it wasn't Noctis, it would be probably Ingus, or would it be like, uh, what's his name? Galoof. No. 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 Oh, that, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You heard about you heard about what's happening with Dataluma, right? Mm-hmm. What are your feels about that? They shouldn't be in Dataluma. That's what it is. They shouldn't. Yeah. Why not? Because there's way other cards that are way better than Dataluma. Okay, give me give me some examples. Like Zidane. Which one? The three drop one. Did you, you you think that card's too the good? One that, um, you were listening to our podcast or something, or is that your actual thoughts? All of you and me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All of you and me. Okay. Okay. Now, why, why Zidane? Because you just, like, have a bunch of cards in hand, and they just go, I'm going to look at your whole hand and take a card. Like, then they're going to know what's in the whole hand. All right. So you get rid of all your combat yeah. tricks. Yeah. I like that answer. Okay. What other cards do you think? What other cards are stronger than Dataluma, in your opinion? What's your least favorite card to play against? Veritas. Veritas? Okay, <laughs> I can see Veritas going, but Veritas is new. That'd I was, I was waiting for Shantoto, because he, he gets yeah. shantoed all the time. <laughs> is it broken, or do you think it's fine? No, it's fine. It's fine? You just need to play around it better? Yeah. I like that answer, dude. Eight years old, he, always reali- he already realizes that he just needs to play better, and then Shantoto's <laughs> fine. So. Good attitude about that, dude. Because you, because if you know people just keep um, Shantoto in your opening hand, then you just keep, then you keep the hand with uh, backups and then you start getting forwards and then you play like two forwards and then the Chantelo and keep your rest of your forwards forward. in your hand nice yeah. there you go expert advice he, from he learned you know. from getting turned to Chantelo three times in a row one night by me <laughs> <Ooh. Here>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. three three anyway. forwards turn one Chantelo. <laughs> all right so you uh you watched the the crystal cup recently which one ice or one well, you both. Which one? Which one was was more entertaining to you? Water. Water was that? That's the Portland one. Why the water cup? Wait, I didn't watch the water cup. Okay, then yes, obviously the ice. Yes, you, did. <laughs> you went to the fire. No, I went to the I went to fire. That was here. You went to fire also. Oh, the yeah. ice one's the one I went to in Canada. Oh yeah. Did you watch that one? Yeah. How was that one? I watched where you won. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that part was pretty cool. Um, well, anything else? Um, that was it. Basically, you watched me win and you tuned out. Yep. Nice, nice. Well, you, I think you were playing in locals yourself that day, right? Yeah. No, you weren't playing locals. No, I was at my basketball game. Okay, and how'd that go? That was fine. That was fine. <laughs> 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 that was fine. So you think that Dataluma shouldn't be banned? That's your message, right? Yeah. Okay. Too late. You lose. Um, and then, do you have any shout outs you want to say hi to? Any people you want to say hi to? Give a shout out to Serena and Sam, my mom. That's it. Yep. Okay. You heard that <laughs> yep. here. No shout outs to Cody this time. Nope. He's no right here. He doesn't need a shout out. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. No need. <laughs> well, he was talking this weekend how he really enjoyed Gregory Cole's uh, slaughter fest of um, scions. Of beating. Yeah. <laughs> and beating me. <laughs> and then. Uh, he was super um, thankful to who, who gave you some cards this weekend. 
Okimoto and Okimoto gave you like uh Garland. Garland. Um and some other cards, right? Yeah. All right. Well, th uh, is there anything else you want to say before we sign you off, bud? All right, peace out, dude. <laughs> I'll see you later. Shut the door. Okay, I will. All right, so, lo so let's get started. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. Thank you, All Jesse. Right. So let's just start with our thoughts on Battle Luma then. Uh, nice little segue there. Uh, yeah, was he the problem card? We talked about it last week, so we don't have to like go super into it, but I think did we, we were... Did we talk about it last week, or did you yeah, cut we talked... it? No, we talked about it last week. So I, I told you I was going to leave it in. We, we talked about it before oh. it was announced. Now, uh, okay. so, yeah, you guys kind of convinced me on Zidane a little bit. Um, we kind of agreed that Donaluma wasn't the problem, but was likely going to be the Axe card. Uh, so are we surprised at all? How are we feeling? I feel I'm great. not surprised. Yeah. Oh, wait, all right, actually, I should say, Sam, how do you feel? Because we know Cody's just throwing parties. Uh, he probably bought some streamers. They're up in his room now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> his deck is I, I, better. I, I don't agree with the solo ban like i've said before um i agree with the data luma ban though mm -hmm. um just I, I again there should have definitely been more cards on the list to shake up the meta a little bit but also i don't know there's a fine line you have to be whenever you're you're square enix or hobby japan and like you don't want people's collections to go down so like if you if you did ban too many cards like if you banned like let's say data luma sedane and layla i have no idea what the meta would look like it would shake it up a bit but people might be upset like Banning Lynn, not Lena, but if you ban Layla, cards like Lena might not even be playable. Um, Two CPU I don't know now, ban it. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know how popular Water would be at that point. And then, like, you just got these foil Cognazzo promos that are out, and now they're not popular. So that's a that's a big misplay. You can't ban cards like Diabolus, although that card's probably definitely up for for banning um, because you just have a a it coming out in a starter with the full art version. Right. So. I don't know. I think that the 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 banning is fine. Dalima should be banned, but maybe maybe we should have considered rotation. Like I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the idea because I want my cards to be worth the money. But I don't know. Something something needs to something needs to go in the win category, in my opinion. But any, I'm any fine thoughts? With be, any thoughts besides you know fist pumping or <laughs> fist pumping, uh, Cody? Uh, well. As much as it hurts me to say, I don't think Dataluma has been as much of a problem these days. Um, obviously, against Mono Ice, it's the the big problem. But, I mean, a lot of Earth Wind decks have moved away from, like, uh, Hecaton or, like, Titans and things like that, where Dataluma got to, like, two for one, or sometimes even three for one, depending on the circumstances. Yeah. Um, although, I'm totally fine with it being banned. Um, we don't have to worry about playing Sid Alstein for one card anymore, so... Seems good. I'm okay with it. Hmm. All right. Yeah, it's fine. So, all right. Then this was also mentioned briefly with Jesse, but uh, Ice Cup. Sam, talk all about it. Sure. Um, it, it's hard. It, it puts me in a, di a difficult position. Um, because people will probably take things out of context. Um, the event itself, from the tournament organization uh, structure, I didn't like the way it was changed to a different venue it was hot it was sweaty like everyone's dripping sweat it was hard to concentrate um it was upstairs in like a lion's club basically um the with anything from printer errors to like hand like hand they called out pairings round one and two by name um we started late so there was a lot of issues with it it, it all around was just and then we had a lunch break after three rounds so mm -hmm. It was just like the feel bads, you know? Something like Magic uh, where you have like, what is it, 50, 60 minute rounds or whatever. That's sometimes reasonable, but yeah, like 30 minute rounds. I've never had a lot of time. In Magic, though, like even in a big GP. I guess that's uh, where you find your own time. But. Yeah, but yeah, so that part was miserable. But, you know, the, the actual, like the judging was good. Um, there was a few inconsistencies, but overall I thought the judges did a really good job. Um, were there any glaring like game losses or things like that that happened, or were some time concerns or well, anything like that? No, n not necessarily. I thought that the judges did a good job. I I called a judge over to watch for slow play twice. Both times the judge came over. Um, one of the times the guy had lethal in his hand on me anyway, so it's like I called him over and he's like, "Okay, do this attack." I'm like, 
never mind, Josh, I'm dead. <laughs> so I just, well, you're over here now. Just go ahead and take the match slip. Um, but it wasn't like the opponent was playing like two, like stalling or anything like that. But times were go, turns were starting to get a little long, and I wanted things to move along a little quicker. Um, but so, I, and all my opponents were really nice. I didn't have a single um, bad encounter over the weekend. So I would say from the Square Enix side. Um, you know, Richie did a good job running things. I didn't get to watch the break zone, um, stream, so I'll have to lean on you guys for that. But I will say that they did an incredible job in person, um, just cheering for the community. Like their interviews were really cool. I got to do an interview. I got to watch their interview with Jordan Dank. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so from the perspective of a player there, the event organization just wasn't run the best. Um, but again, with our community, we tend to rally behind each other. And between just seeing friends, um, seeing Richie, seeing the Break Zone guys, like it was really well done. Um, those types of events always like make me feel like camaraderie. So I can't say enough about that. I will say that, damn it, Gregory Cole. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I, I tested. Um, I tested in. Uh, was basically doing well testing and, and deck theory crafting with Okimoto and Brian for this event. And we'd been talking for a few weeks um, and we came and we settled on a, a list um, that night that we felt pretty strongly. Um, I don't think I would change a single card in the deck besides one. I would probably cut the Camelot knot. And I think just, just running the chaos and the fire cards with Shantoto is just still fine. You have enough fire cards to cast your Phoenixes or Phoenixes to cast your clouds, et cetera, et cetera, VB. Um, I would still run that just without the camo. But anyway, the list we came to was incredibly weak to Scions. Incredibly weak. And Okimoto lost round one, Gregory Cole lost round two, and he found himself paired against Gregory Cole round two. And Gregory Cole basically beat him in like 60 seconds flat. Like it was that quick. It was just a steamroll. So basically we're going into top cut. Gregory makes it. We're talking like, oh, yes, this is sweet. Whatever happens, let's not get paired against Gregory. Like, let's not. If we get paired against GC, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, and sure enough, like I think Cody messaged me. It's like I think it was Cody that he messaged me. Yeah. Like, I think it's Gregory Cole. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was so tilted. I was like, no, right. And I'm coming just after off of Fire CC, where I felt like I was on a hot streak, and then just Gregory Cole just ended my entire run in a matter of like three minutes total between the two games. Um, and so I just can't seem to beat that guy. I mean, he's not, he's on a terror streak. Um, so congratulations to him. I, I couldn't ask to lose to a nicer guy, but I could ask to win sometimes. Um, <laughs> but I mean, and in his deck, he, he, we came back and I altered my deck to kind of like to, to test against it this weekend and just to see if I could be ready for it by the time Kansas rolls around. And like, there would be times where I'd break his Alice, Alice say, like playing against Serena, like three or four times. Or like I guess only three times most I could break it, but like I would just break their backup all the time, and th then I would still lose. And like I can't actually figure out how to beat the deck. Um, I came really close to beating Gregory both games. I both games required him to have a top deck, um, and both games he did and <laughs> killed me. So, but I mean, that's how he built his deck. He 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 massively built his deck so that he's always drawing in the gas because he has so little backups. Um, and it worked out really well. Uh, his list is really cool, but I would love to not lose to that. Um, other than that, day two is pretty cool. I got to administer the judge test. Um, I worked with um, uh, the guys from uh, Square Enix, um, Peter, um, and then we got to administer the judge test. And I think we had 16, 14 people. Uh, 14 or 15 people initially take it and then two afterwards. I think we ended up with like a 16 or 17 people take the test um, over the course of the weekend. The test is hard, but I, I really liked um, the mentality of the people that, who were taking it. I think they might have done a good job, so we'll see. So we might have a whole slew of more judging, judges out, and so I know that's a big community concern. So being able to do these uh, judge tests at, at the CCs is really cool. Um, so, you know, the judge program is growing, so that was part of the ICC that stand out to me. Um, and then just, you know, hanging out with, I mean, I could, I could go more and more, um, into detail. The, let's just say that the ice crystal cup itself, um, had nothing, had nothing on the rest of the weekend, like not even close. Like the ice crystal cup was like a six. It's fine. It was fun. 
um, being able to spend time with Brian and, and Okimoto, uh, being able to spend time with with uh, Commissioner Gordon and JD, <laughs> um, like and, and Tony and all of them was just priceless. And yeah, the event itself was like a ten out of ten, just alone with that. Just just dinner. I had dinner with the Break Zone guys. That dinner alone was ten out of ten. Everything about the event was really cool. The again, I don't. I, I don't wish for the same um, organization for next year. That that's all. But again, all these CCs are dope. So hopefully they answer all your questions. <laughs> uh, well, you didn't talk about your gameplay at all, but I guess you you touched on at least your deck choice and okay, so, the end right, so of the my, tournament. My gameplay is this. My game plays this. <laughs> I played Earth, I played Earthwind. Um, we settled on like a version with one Cloud and one VV. Um, Jeff Paul, I press check. I did have one Paul. I argued pretty pretty heavily for a Death Gaze over the VV. Um, the VV was pretty good for Okimoto and his games, whereas the VV actually cost me every one of my losses. Um, besides maybe a Gregory, I guess. And no, even even a Gregory it was pretty bad. Um, if I had just had a Death Gaze for all of the Ishtola and the, um, what do you call that stupid card, uh, Aerith, that I kept running to, I would feel a lot better about my life. Um, so th that being said, the, I, again, the list felt pretty perfect. I think that's where I would cut. I would cut the Camelot for a Death Gaze. Um, I played against a lot of Wind Water, which I think traditionally I've been told is a really bad matchup. Um I went like three and one against Windwater. I played a lot of it, um, and then I lost twice. I lost once to Ice, I think, and once to no. Okay, you know I don't know. I think I lost once to Windwater, once to Ice, and once to Earth. Um, the Ice deck I definitely just misplayed uh, and lost to. Um, the Earth deck uh, was a really cool like. Um, uh, like a Final Fantasy 15 Earth deck, but it just had a lot of gas. Uh, I, I let I also misplayed that game a little bit. I mean, I'm just telling you for sure that like a lot of my misplays, not to make excuses, were like because I was literally dripping sweat. Like I took a picture of myself. I was dripping sweat. That's how actually hot it was in the room. Um, granted, I had a jersey and a shirt underneath it, so I was probably <laughs> a little hotter than most people. But I mean. Okimoto was wearing a sweater and he was dying and I can't blame him. I just don't know why he didn't take the sweater off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was so hot. It was very hard to concentrate. Um, but those are my games. There was nothing remarkable that happened. I just, some games I got lucky. Some games I got unlucky. I squeaked in at like 27th or something like that. Um, not exactly where I want to be, uh, but pretty happy with my results overall. If I could have just got paired against anyone else day two, um, and you know, going into the night, I played one game on uh, with my list against his exact list. Um, I won that game, uh, but he also had no backups for four turns because I zadained <laughs> him. I zadained uh, backup straight out of his hand, and so immediately, like after beating him, and it was still a close game. I was like, "Yeah, I just needed to know I can win. We don't have to test anymore," because I knew I was like. I want to end this on a good note because I know if we play any more games, I'm just gonna get slaughtered over well, and over. See, and but, over. but in your past though, you've played against me the night before, and I've slaughtered you with like mono win back in Kansas Petite Cup and stuff like that. But then like the next day, you just crush. So and that requires okay, but that exact but that exact situation requires misplays um, to happen and just getting extremely lucky. Now I do think Fair. that Greg didn't play perfect against me. I had a I had an instance for example that I, I disagree with his line where he attacked with a. Um, a, a Ida that was a 10k and he had a Uranger on board and I had a Dataluma in play and so he just attacked straight into my Dataluma and of course I'm blocking with Dataluma then pinging the Uranger and taking out both his forts now it might have been that he prioritized the Dataluma off the board over everything but I don't think I could ever get behind a, a easy two for one against my deck because that's exactly what I want to do right. um, but again Gregory played very good because he he plays that deck very often and you know he's a champion of it he's X and O making top eights in these these ccs so i knew it wasn't gonna be a slouch and, and you know when i when i beat when i beat them on a win deck it was against devin and devin was a pretty new player and he made some play mistakes that um he he three drops had me um and i had a cognazo in hand and he didn't take the cognazo and two turns later i cognazoed him and then a turn after that i bounced it and cognazoed him again um 
So, you know, I, I got a little lucky there and you're going to need a, you're going to need a lot of luck to beat uh, GC <laughs> on, on that deck. I'm telling you right now. And I mean, I, this is how lucky I felt. Like I, of course he always, always opens with Alice because he's a master like that. But there was a, <laughs> There's a turn where like I is the Dane and I take hit the Alice or I take his backup out of his hand. And he doesn't draw anything. And then I discard like um, Mion to keep the semi. Cause I'm like, well, there's nothing I really want. I could bounce this as a Dane, but like I need to get in this game by building backups. And so then he plays a Louis Swa, gets Alice. And I'm like, Oh God. Oh God. He, that's my <laughs> mistake. And then he's going to play it anyway. So I guess it doesn't matter. And then he doesn't play it. I'm like, Oh geez. If I had just kept the Mion, right. And sure enough, I draw the Mion. And I'm like, oh, wow. It's I feel like Alfred right now. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to play I'm gonna play the Mion. I play the Mion. I bounce the Zidane. And I Zidane that fucking Alice out of his hand, right? He untaps and plays another one. He just draws another one off the top. Like, it, like he was <laughs> playing the whole time. And I was just like, why? <laughs> so, I, I mean... Yeah, you're, you're right. I, there, there are situations where you test with me and I beat the unwinnable matchups, right? And then there is the times that I play JC in the top cut of Crystal Cups. <laughs> that's that's what it's going to boil down to. I mean, you know, he and, and he builds his deck so that, it, you know, it's easy for me to say that he hit, I think he hit like seven or eight EX bursts over the course of the two games. Um, I hit him to six and to five. So, you know, I, I, I did what I could. Um, but he built his deck in a way that, that wins... Um, and doesn't get punished for that type of thing. It's just a smart deck design. Um, he's a smart deck builder. I think that the future of deck building is somewhere along these lines. He's, you know, we saw JFB's intervention or, or innovation later, and now we see we see Gary Crow all the way down to thirteen backups. It's when like that uh, Japanese ice water list from like I think it was Opus Five, where they played like eleven backups or something. We were all like, oh my god, what's happening? And then like it turned out that the consistency and the searching and everything of that deck facilitated that. And so what you talked about last week with, or the week before with JFBs. Right. Yeah. And that, that happens quite often. I mean, I think that was, by with, like, that was back with Umaro Gasper too. Turn three man. or four against uh, Okimoto. Uh, G GC had um, uh, five backups on board. And it's just like, and this is before Okimoto knows he's only playing 13. He's like, okay, well, science is doing what science does. <laughs> and it just gets pummeled down by him, you know, and, it is what it is. It sucked. I will say that some, you know, I do want a, sh a special shout out to uh, Jacob, um, who is one of our locals and managed to top 16. Yeah, um, I, was, I was waiting for that. Yeah, I was going to get there. <laughs> he only, you know, he, he lost against the eventual winner, Lord Byron. Um, <laughs> and honestly, it, it could have been Jacob winning the whole event. It, it could have, it really could have been. But game one, he opens with zero backups and doesn't see backup till like, card number 17 and i think game three was something very similar um and so it was just cool to see him do really well um but yeah unfortunately it didn't work out for him and shout out to everyone else that went and you know um to, to chad and jen who were great uh help in testing for the next day and then my heart breaks so much for brian who was the bubbled 33rd place it felt that. so bad um I really thought there's a chance that it was going to be me, but it was Brian. So rough beats for Brian. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically, that's basically how the whole event went. Thoughts, Cody. Um, so in regards to the, like the stream, uh, like with the break zone guys, I thought they did a really good job. Um, the internet, unfortunately was not on their side. Uh, but the first day it was pretty, pretty flawless. I liked all the player interviews that they did. I know they had one with Sam, they had one with JG, uh, Jordan Dank, obviously. And then I really like like the, I guess, like the longer interviews that they did, where they had one with Greg Cole, uh, Lord Byron, of course, and then like Colin Coughlin. I was a big fan of that. Um, but yeah, I thought they did a pretty great job. So the audio issues, that wasn't on the break zone and or equipment end, that was all the internet? Because I know there I were times yes. where they, they were muted, yeah. and then, like, another time stuff didn't, like, turn off right or switch. Yeah, or... well, the, so that was on them when they forgot to mute the stream. Um, sure, that's on them. That's fair. Um, but, the, yeah, the internet was absolute garbage there. Okay. So they, they did their best with what they could. Yeah, because I, I had even messaged uh, Lawrence 
during the stream and i don't think he got it until like after the event which i don't know if that was internet issues or if he just couldn't check his phone or what um mm -hmm. but but yeah, I think outside of the internet issues, they did a pretty good job. I mean, forgetting to unmute or mute is that that, that kind of stuff's small. And I can get over that. Could be big. Could be big. Yeah, it could be big. But I I, I, I need to go back because apparently something funny was said and I missed it. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, for sure. Anyway, <laughs> but no, I, I thought they did a pretty good job, and then uh, the quality was really good. I know they wanted to use a lot of their new equipment. Yeah. And I think due to spacing issues, they were unable to have like the dual stream set up correct the the way they set it up was on the stream or was on this it was on the small stage i would probably say the stage is about six foot by 12 foot um and so the way the rail system sets up in the lights it ha that has to go a long ways and so the players are sitting in the six foot by the, or the six foot dimension wise the across so if you were to lean back in your chair there's a chance you fall off the stage into the into the crowd of other players and on the other side, if you lean back, you'd fall into the wall. So you had to be really careful, and they made sure you know, hey, when you're up here, don't don't lean back, don't 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 jump back when you go to sit up. Like, be careful. Like, oh, the experts, you just fall off the stage, just like. <laughs> it, it like, yeah, it it was it was a little scary. Um, yeah, but it that wasn't their fault. Well, I was kind of like at the fan fest playing on the. Uh... Well, it was worse than that. Much worse. Yeah, but, but, but playing exactly, on the stage with exactly the, uh, what was like. the what's the what was the game called? The boss battles or whatever. Yeah, 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 where you, you're like, you couldn't scoot your chair back like four inches because you just poop. Yeah, it, it, it actually was like that. Um, but yeah, it was scary. <laughs> uh, speaking of boss battles, by the way, like, are they, is that one of the side events for Gen Con? Do we know or not yet? Yeah, all right, we'll just go right into Gen Con then. How's that? <laughs> Cody's looking... favorite subject. So, oh, no, the two, we don't know about side events yet, I don't think. Uh, all we know are the two main events, which is uh, Friday, there is a constructed tournament. Uh, first place goes to Worlds, no other invites, and then the other one is a limited tournament that I believe the first rounds are nine pack sealed, and then top cut is five pack draft, and then you I think it's top cut or maybe it's just more Swiss rounds, is a uh, five pack draft, and then again first place goes to Worlds. So two yeah. Worlds invites, two, two World invites, no national invites. Okay, I know, yeah, I... No, 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 I know what you're gonna say. I know that we were told there weren't going to be any. And I know that we shouldn't have expected any. Go on. Because that's, yes. But from the very beginning, there should have been. Sure. Sure. I mean, so I, that, I, I, I mean that, I that's it. I, I, I believe that there yeah. should be invites. Actually, I, I wasn't expecting them. I don't we... disagree. I don't disagree. If... There should have been invites attached to this event. But we knew there weren't going to be. And people are acting as if they were like, "What? Where did this come from?" Oh no, I, I, as uh, as I, Alejandro would say, from orbit. There's, you know, <laughs> satellite strike, no invites. Yeah, and actually, we do have. Uh, they will have draft Opus Nine drafts. Um, I think throughout the weekend. Mm -hmm. So there is some side events, and I know there's a title tournament. I'm not sure what day or the time. Where were you uh, reading that information? Because I haven't been able to read that yet. On the Gen Con events, uh, not the ones on the post. Uh, oh, but if okay. You, I assume if you just search Final Fantasy, Fantasy. Oh, okay. and it looks like Wolves Den is going to be broken up into like it looks like ten man like. Um, hey, maybe that means we'll actually watch it, so there's no like collusion and stuff this time. Yeah, because it looks like almost like every hour or two hours, there's like a two dollar Wolves Den tournament, but there's a ten player minimum, ten player maximum, I believe. That's pretty cool. So I don't know how many you can participate in or how that works. Or if it'll just be like pay two bucks and you're in Wolves Den for as long as you want to be in Wolves Den. Right, right. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm a fan of Wolves Den, but we've talked about that before because there's just too many ways to I'm like. I'm a fan of it if it's monitored, even though that kind of beats the whole purpose of having just you know mass amounts of people playing games with each other and going for fun challenges. If you start to get like really anal about it and have judges watching, it kind of changes the vibe. But if there's gonna be prizes involved, it just kind of might yeah, be necessary. Albert uh so yeah like having like 10 man pods sounds decent because i think if you line up five on five that's not a whole lot to watch i don't think as like a judge so you, like, you can clearly kind of see if stuff's going on so i think that if that's why they're splitting it like that i could see that being a beneficial uh change to the format would you agree yeah uh, no i definitely agree and uh, it could just end up being a placeholder mm -hmm. um but i guess we'll i'm sure square enix will release a, like a full statement i imagine here soon um probably i've heard friday they were gonna announce something so 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Friday's the ticket sales as well, right? For both the yeah. both of the main events that uh, the world's invite. Right, which will sell out. Probably by the time this podcast is out, they will yeah, already right. have been <laughs> sold out. <laughs> um, uh, so hopefully I'm... we get some more information on like what we get for entering. Um, I know I've heard a lot about the Zidane promo, mm -hmm. like the full art, which I think is really cool. Um, but I don't know. I'm just kind of burnt out on the cardboard box for every event. Ever, uh, so. Yeah, I agree. I would, would like something different. Although like, I, I was reading a post from Hunter the other day that sort of was compelling, which was like you can actually sell that kind of stuff for quite a bit and make up a lot more than you may have in a normal, like even like if you compare it to magic tournaments, like, the EV of a Magic tournament's relatively low if you don't make really like high top cuts, whereas mm -hmm. uh, Final Fantasy tournaments you generally walk away either even or plus on product. Uh, obviously, it's not money, <laughs> but it it converts pretty readily. So I'm I'm a little maybe less critical after seeing those arguments, but uh, I definitely would like a variety. <laughs> yeah, no, and I understand that. I, I I'm just a person that li I like to keep most of the stuff that I get from events. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, like a playmat, I'll use that every day, but like the boxes, they just sit around. Right. There's and I mean, are I you a binder sell. guy or like, how do you, how do you store your cards? I don't know if we ever talked about that. I have mostly binders. And then obviously I have like, like the little like deck box things, but, sure. um, but now I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the cardboard boxes. I've got enough. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and I think, I think I... if you're selling, I, like they resell for like 40 bucks a piece, which I think is absolutely ridiculous, but I mean, Hey, <laughs> Yeah. I, I have a bunch I need to offload at some point. I have a sealed black playmat still. And yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see something like uh, like how the I think it was the Grand Open or maybe the Winter Cup where they had entry playmats. Mm -hmm. For instance, like the Cloud and Sephiroth one that well, I that's use. That's like uh, uh, Magic GPs. Like the big, they're called Magic Fest now. They're mm -hmm. the last one I went to. There were like eight hundred people or something, almost thousand. They've been over a thousand easily before, and they they're frequently six hundred plus. I don't know if I've ever actually heard of one less population, but uh, everybody gets playmat, and everybody yeah, gets not. a foil promo, whatever the current promo is, just for entry, and then you can yeah. side events give you more promos and stuff. And like the last yeah, promo not. was a foil lightning bolt, which I know you don't play Magic, but I'm sure you've heard the <laughs> name lightning bolt. Uh, the card was like sixty dollar foil, which an entry was like seventy five. Plus you got a playmat. Uh, yeah, seems pretty good. But yeah, I mean, even if like for instance, like the whales tournaments. They have a playmat on entry each year that they've had those. Is it a playmat uh, with a whale emoji on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even that would be a, a huge hit. Uh, <laughs> it would be. But no, I think if whales gets a Gen Con and get a playmat every year. Uh, so where did you see the event, by the way? Uh, the event finder? Is that where this? Okay, I actually Come just find, found the event. So if I type in Square Enix. I just typed in Final Fantasy is what I typed oh, in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so learn to play... Constructed warm -up, Yeah, they have several learn to plays. Um, constructed okay. tournaments on like the Thursday before. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing that. And then the okay, yep, World Championship qualifier one o'clock. Uh, or I'm sorry, ten, or yeah, ten to one, something like that. They have it like broken yeah. up into three bits or something because of the way the events have to be scheduled, I guess. But uh, it's all the same. Yeah, thing. which which obviously we won't have a world's qualifier okay, so, okay, be done yeah, in three hours. I was wrong. So yeah, there are a lot of side events in here, like different learn to plays. There's a learn to play every like couple hours. It's pretty nice. Well, I th I think that part of the reason that it's broken up the way that it is is that you have to have um, your events for Gen Con when you're scheduling them have to be like blocked off. So if you are like right, okay, if, if you say like okay, we have a 72 person cap for this event, right? Gen Con will say okay, you got room for 72 people. That's fine. Well, three hours later, if you want to start a Wolves Den and your cap for that Wolves Den is like 15 people, they'll say something along the lines of, well, you don't have room for that. You already have a 76-person event going on. But realistically, three three hours later, a lot of those people have dropped, right? They went 02 drop or 03 yeah, drop. Yeah. And so now those people can be entering those tournaments. But Gen Con's going to say, hey, um, you, don't have the you don't have the room for this so that we, we can't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, I guess that could be part of the whole thing. Is like they have a lot of other side events going on, so maybe their space is just taken up. That's why um, the entrance, the amount of entrance is so low. But seventy four is a strange number. I was dividing it by like various integers to see if I could get an even count to try to figure out the logic. I couldn't. 
Uh, does anybody uh, have any idea why it might be 74? Or I don't. Like, I got tried no. to divide it by like three and four, and like none, none of it made sense to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, and I'm not even sure what the cap was last year. Um, I know I was able to purchase my tickets much later. It wasn't like a like two o'clock. I'll have to be ready on my phone, ready to buy tickets. So, so yeah, what happens but, I mean, if you? So you have also, all the housing and stuff. Are you gonna go to Gen Con anyway if uh, you don't get tickets? Uh, yeah, most definitely. I'm staying with <laughs> Oki and Chris Adams. So. Right, right. And Brian Burke. That's the time guys. you don't want to miss. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I'll, I'm going regardless, and I'll, I'll get a ticket. I'll be uh, at work on Friday. Just like hiding in the bathroom buying tickets on my phone or something. <laughs> That's how I go to, yeah. Just go somewhere yeah. and be like, be back, be back in a bit, guys. Um, I'm glad that they did announce the timing that the tickets will go on sale. Assuming that, like, the website doesn't crash or... Right, so basically you're happy that there's no, it's not a fanfare. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> <He's> drift. <laughs> was, not a, was not a great fan, uh, the fanfare, uh, but... I think they can definitely. I hope they can raise the cap on this, and I'm sure RB or Square or somebody's gonna drop a like an official post on the North America page. Yeah. Um, sure. Just because I feel like 74 is gonna sell out in minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna take long at all. And the the problem is too, like people who don't have Gen Con tickets yet or housing are gonna get it, and then they're gonna end up seeing things are expensive, and then having to relinquish the tickets, and then things are gonna get confusing. And <laughs> right. Hope that's yeah, and I'm okay. I'm staying in an Airbnb with, potent, I believe twelve players for both events. So yeah, I just hope all twelve of us can get in. And I mean, there's tons of people coming from out of town that I want to see and I want to play against and all that stuff. So what day was Gen Con last year? Was it the same like beginning of August? I believe so. I'm just going back to what the population was last year. Yeah, not a hundred percent sure on the exact dates. So what about the total? What about the cap of how many? Like how many players played in these last year? That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to find. Oh, Crystal last Cup we, Indianapolis. That was Gen Con, right? Yeah, last year we had the yeah. the constructed was split into two days. If you guys All remember. All right, so you had two yeah. days. So one of them was eighty participants. Okay, and the other one? Uh, that was. Uh, I it's don't easy to see no. a second day. I think it was fifty something on the second day. Oh, yeah, I played on and the then, like, the records reset, right? And, like, the day three was some weird combination bracket thing. Yeah. I don't it think was the just, records reset. No, I think it, it was just... It was just top, top 16. Top 16. Yeah. 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 Correct. Oh, okay. So the winner of day one essentially played, like, the winner of day two. Well, the, re the reason I was asking is because I don't, I don't know if... If they'd had the events... If they'd had the event all of one day, do you think 130 people would sign up for that one day? Or do you think that splitting it up was a... A good way to do it. Like, I was never a fan of the split. Uh, I brought in too many mind games and things along with it, but I understand the logistics at least. Yeah, I mean. Okay, so I, I guess there's a good point that we had three events last year. We're only having two this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess I'm. I guess what I'm getting at is like, well, if we had an event where like 50 people showed up last year, then it it almost seems a little hypocritical to like say well 74 that's irate but i guess like also if we had an event that was 80 last year then you can then there's there's well, more but merit. also they were capped last year too like if there wasn't a cap how many people would join i know it's unrealistic you can't uh, i know the cap was not 50 <laughs> or 80 right. so they both both caps weren't meant weren't, weren't met interesting yeah i think um i believe the sealed one last year did sell out um, yeah, i can't find I, either of those on FF. and i'm sure he can comment if I'm wrong, but I believe James Lockwood actually gave up his spot to let another player play in the tournament. I'm that almost sounds like a very James thing to do. Yeah, I'm almost 100 percent sure because I'm pretty sure it's a guy from my locals, um, and I'm sure James will comment down below if I'm completely wrong or something. But I'm pretty sure he gave up his spot so another person could join. Let me ask. Let me ask you this: Do we know, like the the date? You guys said you you figured out the date or no? Yeah, it was the Friday and the Saturday the two events i mean like what was the date like 10 it was, it was what was the month last year yeah uh oh, august. It was last year it was august 5th i think i'm seeing okay so let's see august 5th i just went on ff decks to see all the tournaments i didn't see that's what i'm doing 
if you go to all time, then it's page. Uh, I believe it's. Oh, can't tell Four, I'm on, so probably 48. 40, 43, 49, yeah. 43, 44. Definitely not 48. 45, 46. 47. 50, 47, okay. 47 top is Crystal Cup Indianapolis constructed. I can't find the other ones that uh, that were held at Gen Con the same weekend or the same. Right. And the re that's the reason I was asking. I was hoping that we could see that based off the number of participants. So one was 80. We don't know the other one. <laughs> Jordan Dank. Sorry, guys, eh? <laughs> Modifies. <laughs> Oof, how things have changed. Correct. It's a pretty stacked top, top eight. It was, yeah. yeah. One name I don't know, actually. Was it, is it possible there was 80 participants total for both days? No. I know. I... No, absolutely not. I played in day two, and day one was, like, way more full than day two was. Okay, I just don't, I just don't see, like, um... Yeah, I don't know. Well, actually, there's a link on that one to the entire top 32 uh, for the constructed, which I believe includes both days. Yeah. Yeah, that would be both days. Because it was top 16 from each day moved on to Sunday. Mm -hmm. And Sunday was also the day they did, like, Wolfston. I don't even remember what day they did the sealed Crystal Cup. That might have been Thursday. Yeah, I don't remember. It was... Because it was a separate day to its own, to its like by itself, mm -hmm. yeah. along with learn to plays, obviously, and stuff like that. Which I mean, even if they would have to do a split, I'd totally be fine with that if it gets more people playing the game. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is why they did it last year, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think that's why they did it for sure, because they had a population cap, so they wanted to give more people an opportunity to play. And maybe they took that data and saw that, hey, one day was 50, one was 80, we'll be fine with this, but I, I don't know. Um, I know, 74. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm trying yeah, I, here. I'm trying. Yeah, I don't know the, I don't know the, number, the reason, but I'm, I'm sure there isn't. Maybe that's just the reason for the space that they got. Yeah, which is, I'm sympathetic, just obviously I would prefer in my rich fantasy life as my old college professor would say uh <laughs> we have a much higher population for every event they'd be uncapped unlimited space but yeah all right yeah the the other thing too is um like there there are going to be other pricing too right i guess we don't know what that is and so that's leaving people a little bit anxious it doesn't matter yeah it I does think, I think it does like the zidane alone is going to pay for your ticket like absolutely <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I'm keep. I, I need three. Why would I be selling one? <laughs> that doesn't change the value of oh, it. Know, just because you decide yeah. not to sell it, like yeah. it's still valuable. I don't have to buy it yeah, just for entering. Yeah. Oh, In it. fact, if you need three for your collection, then it's basically that money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So, it's it seems good, and I I don't know what the other pricing is going to be. So. Yeah, I think last year at this point, all we knew was that we were getting the Furion box for one tournament and the Warrior of Light for the other. Right, and I can only assume that we're getting boxes for these for this tournament, but I don't know. I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, and it, it, it had listed that, I believe, on the Gen Con like, event page last year. Um, but I'm sure Square will come out with a, an official post here soon. So. Yep, and I, I'm sure it'll be Friday after like tickets are on sale and responding to everything, so... Yeah, which right. I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of it if it is on Friday. Obviously, this will probably come out on Friday as well, like the cast. Well, um, I hate having to like buy a ticket where I don't know what I'm getting. Yeah, well, my my guess too though is that um, the the information came back for Gen Con today, and so they wanted to put it up as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but it is also Richie's birthday, so she probably took a day off. And that's probably uh, well. I, I I'm gonna guess that we'll see more information tomorrow. We were told that the the events were gonna be special, um, and so I figured two deck format. I mean that would make yeah, sense. Yeah. So my inkling is that like, well, if you get two world invites for for Gen Con, like there's two things that should happen. Like either you're gonna have a sealed tournament in like a two deck format or something, mm -hmm. um, or you're also gonna have like a team tournament, which would have been sick to have uh, twos. Mm -hmm. and like we've done that locally but it would have been sick to have twos that would be an interesting way to do the two invites as well it would have been yeah that's 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 why i i thought well two worlds invites um and you could do a two-day tournament like a big like a bigger grand you know 
two day cut to top whatever day two type tournament instead of like whatever separate yeah and so i don't know i just think that you know just if i i can't i can't just say like if you don't like it don't go because i know people have put money into hotels and stuff and and that type of stuff but and yeah i haven't put all that in yet so i have less to complain about for sure right and 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 for the people that have like just go gen con is gonna be awesome i'm sure of it you know like it's probably gonna be a really good time um like i said like the ice crystal cup was fun but it was like the least fun part of the trip so (laughs) if if you somehow don't make it if 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 cody does not make it into the event if he's like number 75th trying to get a ticket i have no doubt that he's probably gonna have the most fun out of anyone that goes to that event like the guy who doesn't play the event but still gets to hang out with all the people is probably having the best time (laughs) less stress and i can almost (laughs) i can almost guarantee like that too not like just me but like (laughs) Uh, but like last year, the funnest part wasn't playing. It was like going out to dinner or, right, par- partying at some random Airbnb because I didn't know any. <laughs> I I knew nobody back then. And that like, goes for it, but that goes for every event that you play in, right? Like yeah, the for most, sure. the, the, the most m- fun things do not happen during the tournament, like ever. For They're the most cool, part, except but... Kansas, maybe. Kansas, the tournaments are. I love Kansas the tournament is good, but listen, I've won two tournaments in Kansas and. Never has it been the best part of Kansas. You know, Not hum- once. Humble brag. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, if you're gonna have a good time in Kansas, oh, yeah, you might as well true. win the whole thing, right? And it still wasn't the best time. The best time is still hanging out with you guys, hanging out with Jake, seeing all the normal people, being able to see Aaron Wiseman, like, just everything about that. Meeting new people. Like last time I got to meet uh, meet Patrick, for example. Um, just getting to see everyone. Like those are those things are the best parts, no matter where you go. So. If you really are upset about Gen Con, like, suck it up, sell your Zidane, profit, and have a really good time. Like, you could probably, if you, if you happen to enter the event and you do well, you'll probably be able to pay for the whole trip off the uh, what, what you do well. If you get first place, sick brags, you get to go to Los <laughs> Angeles. I mean, again, I agree. Like, it, it, it's ridiculous that it doesn't have a Nationals invite. It doesn't make any sense to me. But perhaps it's just a matter of math. And, and the math is, is that we have... They have a specific spot that Square Enix is allotted for Nationals, and this is how many players can go to Nationals. Okay, now we've already set up Wave 1, 2, and 3 LQs. We might not know what they are, but they've been set up. And so we have those spots plus the Crystal Cup for allocated. So if they don't have room for more people, they can't just add four random spots. Or I guess in this case, it would be 12 National spots is what you... Not you specifically. What I'm saying is to the people that are asking for national spots, you're asking for 12 spots, right? Um, but I guess there's only two events eight. this time, so it's eight. eight Sorry. Spots. Last year. So it'd be eight spots. That's a lot of spots. That's a lot of people, realistically, when you're looking Man. at hotel venues. And, and look at our venue last year. Like, it was very busy. It was... Well, we had we had eight invites at Gen Con last year given out. Correct. Right. But what I'm saying, but last year, I don't even know if we had three waves or if we just had two waves of LQs. We had two and then a few 108 people or something for nationals last year. 108 invites. Right. So what I'm saying is with with the additional waves, with the additional stores um, supporting the game, we just might not have an extra eight spots. And I'm not saying uh, maybe they should have just done eight less LQs. Um, which I disagree with. I think I, I like, I would rather them have no invites at Gen Con and more LQs in the community. Um, but what I'm saying is you can't just magically come up with these, these things. If that was the case, if you could just magically come up with any number, they would just uncap nationals, right? Like just everyone goes because they make money off of it. Right. So why would they not want everyone to go? So well, they definitely, I think they definitely could get like the bigger ballrooms at that hotel. At the Hilton, uh, for instance, like sure. Nat, like Nats year one, we had 180 players that showed up, give or take. I could be off on that number. And it was in a bigger room, right? It was in like the downstairs ballroom. Okay, but what I'm saying is that probably cost them a fortune. And then they saw like, hey, you know what? We could realistically cap this and then do it for less, um, which is just a more fiscally responsible thing. <clears throat> not not that it's necessarily the better thing. I, again, I don't agree with that. I don't agree at all. I think I think there should be spots at gen con i think that the cap should be lifted and all that but i am saying that there's an argument that like if if headquarters of square enix like cool listen here's your budget 
go get a place and work with it, then I don't know what Square Enix is supposed to do. Um, you know, obviously that's your one we had to pay for our ticket to get in. Right. So that and that probably helped a, a okay. bigger ballroom, but huge amount, I'm sure. Yeah, huge amount. Uh, well, you had 180 people times however much it was for a ticket. What was it like 25 or something? Something like that. Uh, 35. 25? I, I want to say it was somewhere 35 there. or 40, possibly. <clears throat> right. So, and that includes getting a playmat, right? Like, and and what at the time it was a notebook, a pen, um, lanyard, um, lanyard. Like, so yeah, you you got like hooked still up. Use that pen. Actually, it's right here. <laughs> nice. Nice. I still have that pen, but I never use it because I hate that. I hate it. Uh, I don't mind it at all. I usually use it to do like podcast notes. <laughs> oh, nice. So I actually bought mine off Min. Um, but yeah, I just uh, I, I I agree with you guys that there should have been there, but like you guys are gonna have a good time if you go. Like Zach, you're trying to work on a, a game that you want to promote. Like this seems like a reason to go. Um, I'd. I think it's worth it to Spoiler? go. I think that. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I was not supposed to say that, right, but yeah. I mean, I I think that you know, Cody, you are staying with two or three of the coolest people in the entire planet. Like, it's probably just a mistake for any of you guys to play in this thing. Yeah, there's like eleven of the coolest people. I feel like. <laughs> well, they, I don't I don't know who all you're staying there's, with. But, it's but like Kyle point, and Brian. And well, Chris there you go. Brian. It's very point cool. being it's, that it's Meta Potion and RVA and. And Irving. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you, yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have a really good time. So, no, no, definitely. But I want everybody to be able to play. That's invested. For sure. I'm, it, I know for sure. Over at least over a hundred Final Fantasy players have bought their tickets. I could guarantee. Virginia. I could almost guarantee that. Well, I don't. Know, I I doubt that very much. Honestly, I doubt that. I I very highly doubt that. I will say this. Those I think that risky everyone, people if they don't have their Gen Con tickets already. Right. Well. Well, I just don't think there's that many that have that that buy it that proactively. Um, looking at CC sales and stuff, like we had to lift a we had to lift a cap on on ice on the ice crystal cup because Jordan Dank, the returning champion, Mister Two Time himself, world competitor, didn't sign up for for it until the last minute. You know, so is that <laughs> look, why they lifted the cap so he could play? I can't say that that's why they lifted the cap. I don't know that for a fact, but I did know I saw Jordan comment that he didn't get in, and all of a sudden they're they're moving entire venues. I mean, you gotta let the returning champ play, right? <laughs> and so, I, and that's no dog against uh, against Jordan. I all I'm trying to say is that I don't think people are that proactive. I think that the 74 people that most want to go will get in. Um, I think that that. Maybe I'm wrong. If you look back at fanfare, maybe that's not true. There were certainly people that wanted to go, but but let's say the thing: everyone likes to raise hell for no reason. All right, <laughs> everyone raised hell about the sea, the ice crystal cup. Oh my god, we can't believe this. This is outrageous. Why would the cap it at such a low thing? Sixty four is ridiculous. Let's ride in the streets. <laughs> what do we fire with seventy people? With six more people, we ride it over six people. Come on. Well, that's the population after having it all capped and people canceling plans and stuff. Oh, yeah, right. Who knows, like, who knows like, what would have been. Like, like, there was a <laughs> single person that canceled their plans, and they're like, oh, I guess I can't get in. I'll, I'll just throw away this airplane ticket. No. No, they waited to see if it would be lifted, and it was lifted. And the same thing is going to happen with, with Gen Con. Cody, you're going to get your ticket. Uh, everyone's going to get their mine. ticket. Don't worry. Listen. <laughs> I will eat the hat if I'm wrong, but I, I really think that anyone who wants a ticket will get a ticket when it goes on sale. I, The only problem I see is people who are unsure, that they're still unsure. Like, those are the people who weren't even considered going if this stuff was out in May, who are going to buy a ticket just in case they decide to go. And, and then that could be an, an issue. But then again, those people will just resell their ticket down the line or drop it, and then you'll get a spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I hope they'll have something for that. Um just because I know, like, I had friends that wanted to go to Nationals. They couldn't go because the tickets sold out too quick. And then we get to Nationals and 20 people are gone. Well, as of right. 6.30 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, June 5th, there are four-day passes left for Gen Con. So, anybody yeah. wants to go, get on that. Because trust me, if you're going to go, you buy that four-day pass because it gets a lot more expensive if you don't buy the four <laughs> together well you only you only need two days now sure so if you pay for those two days just those two days is 135 okay yeah yeah by the four day by four the four days day. 110 
Oh, really? Yeah. The That's four days separate are 60, 60, 75, and 15. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Buy your tickets That's, now. That... <laughs> or buy your, buy your, buy your tickets now. Minutes. And on, on Friday at what time, Cody? Oh, I don't know what time. Probably anything. like noon West Coast. Oh, I, I thought you had mentioned that they had released the time. Oh, 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 for the event purchases. Yeah, it's Correct. two my time, three your time, 12 if you're on the California. Okay. So buy your tickets. Then if you're really interested in going, um, I think that everyone is going to go. I think that, again, people are just making a big deal about, you know, like, like, I, I wanted to find a perfect quote, but <laughs> eh, we'll find it later. While you're looking for that, uh, just briefly touch on any any thoughts on the Grand Open Paris results. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay. Any, anyone who says this is a complete joke is exaggerating <laughs> to the fullest. Hey, but look at how much attention that comment got. Yeah, you got <laughs> 11. Oh, man, I'm so proud of you. You got 11, but you got 23 replies. I know every time I click my phone, it just... You know, when you hit 75 replies, then I think maybe we'll have an issue because <laughs> you've, you, you've gone past the cap, okay? We'll have to see when, I, the, listen, when the episode listen, goes I'm, live. I'm capping this thread at 75 replies, or 74 replies. Last right, time so, we made a bet. Yeah, I got a plush. You, I'm not making a bet. I, <laughs> I, I will use my moderator powers to cap this oh, thread. There, there's, 90, there's 99 <laughs> comments, yeah. Oh man, dang it! I'm glad I didn't bet. It's <laughs> a good call. No, I imagine the cap will get raised. Um, hopefully, they'll throw some Nats invites. But only if hey, but only oh, uh, you know what? But only if content creators speak up, right? <laughs> are, you, are you guys not familiar with that thread? Uh, I don't huh. know if I'm familiar with it. Listen, if RVA and Meta Potion request it, Square Enix will listen. Okay. What about us you... little choker bros over here? No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, we're just we're just humble servants of growing the oh, game. Okay. <laughs> All right, we we don't actually have any pull with Square Enix, according to whoever posted. I don't remember who posted it. Um, but supposedly, if 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 we as content creators, we actually just RVA and um, I forget who else they named. But it, it, it was RVA and Meta Potion request the cap to be listed lifted. You you heard it here first. Square Enix will listen. They will lift the cap because Chris Adams said so. Get on it. I'm going to hit up Chris right now. <laughs> no. I, I, I want him. To, I listen. What I want and what I'm calling for right now, if I have to start a petition, I will. What I'm calling for right now is a comment from Chris Adams where he says he announces first his full name and then says that he is calling for an official lift on the Crystal Cap 74. Okay. And then what I want is I want. A recording from Brian Berkeley or Matthew Akimoto saying the same thing, saying that they stand behind their fellow uh, content <laughs> creator and that they will also ride it in the streets. Okay, so if if this happens right now, Square Enix will listen and then everyone will be justified. There'll be proof that content creators are secretly running this game and running it into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we need to request more than just the cap lift, though. Oh, well. We want some play mats or something I'll better. Me I'll message Chris Adams podcast. right now for this. <laughs> so, Grand Open Paris results. <laughs> yeah, uh, really, their leaderboard uh, is very cool. Mr. Cool's, Mr. Cool's deck won uh, that, right? No, I don't know if it's his is, deck. I, I don't know what you're talking I think about. It's ice, ice Water or, Vic yeah, Vice Kings. Is yeah, exactly. Vice Kings. Yep. I think it's his exact 50. Um, supposedly, he went completely undefeated on all... Yeah. Like, does that mean like two o two o two o, or does that mean like? I, I believe so. And yeah, through Swiss, and it was a best of three format too. I believe the whole thing. Oh, was it? So he just just thrashed think... everybody. That's insane to me. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I guess I know what I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I didn't know that part. Let me put this ice deck in the trash. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the deck. No, no, no yeah. just half of it. Just add the other water to the yeah, other yeah. half of it. <laughs> yeah. Except, here, let me uh, find the post because it was FFTCG Europe. Put up the post about and the was, results. I don't, that was oh, Fabian, right? Yeah, Fabian. Yeah, and I think so he's congratulations to this. Fabian for winning Grand Open Paris. His water ice deck went completely undefeated through the best of three tournament on both days. Well done. So I don't know if that means like two zero every one. That's what I would think completely undefeated means. But or if they just mean like you know yeah. never lost a best of three in the whole tournament. 
Either way, it seems. Either way, it's good. impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I think he's moved in the second on their leaderboard for their world spot, behind Robert Phillips. And then uh, seventh place is a deck that I've actually been messing around with a different, quite different version of the same idea, which is the like summon mill control. Sweetness. I love that deck. Yeah, for like, sure. Oh man, oof, <laughs> made me happy. <laughs> It's got like, yeah, so like things like Sherlata are a sweet upgrade for the deck. Um, I don't know if I, maybe I'd play uh, Norse Stalin just to have the searching, but like Seymour is sweet for it. Like this deck is awesome. Medine. <laughs> Cody, would you yeah, play this deck? I... No. No, uh, heck no. He would say, what's that pile? <laughs> he's, yeah, no. He's like, wait, there's more than two colors? I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, if a card has more than like two lines of text, I'm good. I'm just going <laughs> to. And there's no discard in the text. I don't want it. <laughs> I mean, you're discarding from the top of their deck. Isn't that even better? They can't like respond by like pitching it or something. Yeah, but I could just play that in Wind Water, and it's way easier. It's true. <laughs> play... But, <laughs> but no, very interesting uh, tournament results. So. Yeah, I think that about wraps us up for this week, right, guys? Yep. I hear Sam messaging Chris Adams. So <laughs> I'm right. writing an entire post Look on the U.S. thread. Oh, okay. oh boy! Look forward, look forward to that announcement. It'll probably be out before this episode comes out. But, oh yeah, uh, I can't edit this in like two months. So I that. But yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. We've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snipe Prime, and I'm Zach Burrell. We'll see you next time. Hey everybody! Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Choker Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page, or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out cardivalice.com and use promo code CHOKERBROS to get 10% off your next order.